Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got another epic dream video for you. This time it's very much so Overwatch related. So the gameplay you're seeing right now is Overwatch. I'm playing Soldier 76 because he's actually central to the dream, but don't worry, it's not as silly as it sounds. The dream itself is kind of a mix of Overwatch heroes and maybe the anime Darker Than Black. It'll be going a little bit faster paced than usual, a little bit more summary and less details, but it'll also be less scary, less dark and depressing. So it should be fun. Let's jump right in. I had a dream that I was in Cologne, Germany, and I was meeting up with a large group of my friends from college. Probably 20 or 30, almost everyone were all part of the same kind of engineering, math, nerdy club, that sort of thing. And there was a very big event going on at the Dome in Cologne. If you're unfamiliar with the Dome, it is a massive uh, middle medieval cathedral built there, Middle Ages, in Germany. It is huge. It towers over the whole city. You can see it from space, even. And it was some sort of very special show, and we were going to go watch uh, some sort of live performance and it was a completely full house the dome was packed as many people as could be in there was in there and everybody got seated like an hour early because we were waiting for the show to start and we wanted the good seats and all that sort of stuff I'd been there for a little while and I was getting a little bored so I decided you know what I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna go to the train station next door I'm gonna use the bathroom and I'm gonna get some snacks and some water and bring back for everybody and they'll probably appreciate that so I step out go use the bathroom get my snacks minding my own business and I'm walking back to the dome just holding big bags full of nonsense and junk food German pastries are fantastic by the way when out of absolutely nowhere pink lightning strikes the dome itself which pow right on the top but it wasn't normal lightning though it was super loud, super bright, and extremely disorienting. I would liken it to being hit by a truck made of light. It immediately knocked me out and over for a few seconds. I couldn't hear, I couldn't see. It's kind of like being hit by a flashbang, right? But when I finally came to, when I finally cleared my eyes and I was able to get my senses back about me, I realized that all hell had broken loose. I don't know what in the hell that pink lightning did, but it certainly wasn't good because all around me, laying on the ground, people were screaming in pain and agony and suffering and twitching. Uh, many of them were covered in various types of goo or crusty brown stuff or cocoons, and it was just, just strange and chaotic. There were weird anomalies everywhere, lightning, fire, electricity, rumbles, people disappearing and reappearing, loud noises. It was really scary to tell you the truth, and the church itself was completely covered in this sort of weird alien, mucusy, crusty sort of material, and I could hear screaming coming from inside. It was a complete transformation of the environment. But uh, these were people that I know, good people, normal citizens, so I decided to suck it up and do my absolute best to play field medic. No training, no expertise, and all effort all the way. Go from person to person to person, no matter how bad they're feeling, no matter how bad they're looking. Talk to them, calm them, pet them, stabilize them anything I can possibly do for medical assistance. Give them snacks, water, comfort, and after about 15 or 20 minutes of doing this, of bouncing from person to person to person, I remembered that all of my friends were still in the church, and I decided I should probably get in and try to help them. There weren't very many people there actually trying to help. Almost everybody fled. I guess I was kind of a first responder, but not a medical professional. So I run up to the church, front door, all the doors, and I realize there's no way in. It's like completely sealed off and cocooned. I try to punch it, try to cut it, stab it, nothing just completely blocked off, and inside I could hear constant screaming, endless, painful screaming, just terrifying sort of stuff. And at this point, I'm going to skip ahead and paraphrase a little bit because the details get a little bit more vague for me too. The short version is that everybody inside that church and everybody that was close enough to it got superpowers when that pink lightning strike. It just struck, and if you were in the right area, you got some sort of random superpower, some sort of X-Men level, heroes level, genetic mutation, except everybody inside the church got even better better superpowers, like more superpowers. Like if you're on the outside, you're on the B team. If you're on the inside, you're on the A team. And that's how it works. Except me, since I had to go pee and had to get snacks, I got absolutely nothing at all. I got Jack Diddley squat. And that really, really sucked. Imagine if every single one of your friends got superpowers and you got a bag of Oreos. That is not a good trade, but that's what happened to me, and it was very depressing. And it ended up being somewhat kind of like Overwatch and the TV show Heroes, or maybe Darker Than Black. It didn't take very long for factions to break out, and war, and proxy wars, and battles. Some people thought that super strength meant that they should be king or ruler of whatever their country, or city street, or area. Other people thought teleportation meant that they should just rob banks easily and retire. And some poor bastards couldn't handle their powers. Some people actually 
killed loved ones on accident, on purpose, or just plain old went crazy. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, right? So you had some Joker-level madmen running around with superpowers. Thankfully, the vast majority of my friends sided with good over evil and formed a sort of league to help out, a Justice League, Super Friends, whatever you want to call it, the good guys in Overwatch, and uh, I decided to help too. This was world-changing, game-changing, the biggest event that had ever happened in human history, and I wanted to be a part of it, so I hopped on board, and I was doing research for them, on them, about them, medical work, engineering work, I was doing activist work, I was testifying to the Senate on their behalf, I was lobbying, I was working my butt off for the better of not only the powered people but human beings in general and it just kept getting worse the powered uh, bad guys kept getting more and more crazy and I hit kind of a finite limit on my expertise my scientific knowledge and my activist work and I decided that I wanted to deploy on missions and fight alongside them and help take out the powered people in the very beginning the good guys the good guy league were much stronger than the baddies who weren't organized so there was very little threat very little real danger and they found it humorous actually I was considered like a kid like a mascot like a joke so I was allowed to deploy and use my peasant guns and things like that and uh, I tried my absolute best to be useful but more often than not I was a burden if I was lucky I was just able to spot something or give good advice and they kept me along for the ride because they found it fun somehow despite the power increases and completely different dynamics we maintained our friendship and everything was great uh, but I wasn't useful at first but I trained hard, extremely hard, exercise, cardio, I did every martial art I could, every type of combat, every weapon, I studied all the enemies top to bottom, I paid for combat training from special ops people, I stole the best gear from some other governments or even helped my, get my teleporting, uh, teleporting friend to help do it, and I even did a few small cybernetic enhancements on myself, I got a fake eye to help me aim and see an infrared and things like that, and eventually became somewhat useful and somewhat dangerous. I was slowly becoming Soldier 76 from Overwatch, trading in bits of my body and personality for increased fighting power, and in one particularly rough deployment, I managed to single-handedly defeat the most powerful supervillain on the planet. For the life of me, I don't remember how. That's the funny things about Dream. You lose some of the details, but everybody else was knocked down, captured, and out, and here's me, the lowly peasant human, the mascot, the joke, the person that they bring along for fun, and I take out the super ultra-powered bad guy, and finally, I got some respect for my friends. I was finally considered to be on the same tier of them. I had finally redeemed myself and we were on equal standing. As the war drug on, people died, uh, friends lost, good, bad, ugly, they disappeared, they retired, and the team got smaller and smaller and smaller, but I persisted. I stayed, I fought, I continued to perform well. I was basically kind of like Soldier 76 or Batman or the guy from uh, Darker Than Black and was eventually considered a top member of the combat team as well as the activists and the research team. I had a hand in everything. Even got a superpowered girlfriend who was basically like Reaper from Overwatch, had the same abilities and everything, and on special occasions such as anniversaries and whatnot, she would take off her mask and we would have sexy times. But all of this was not to last. Get out, no. cover. Quit screwing around and get ready to move. Some of our psychic or more brilliant or mentally enhanced members kept telling us that the pink lightning was coming again and that we needed to be there. It was sort of a prophecy that was going to be self-fulfilling that we needed to secure the dome because on the 10 year anniversary of this, the pink lightning would come again and anybody that was there would be enhanced again or any new people could be enhanced as well. So we, the good guys, secured the area, and we decided to sit there and have the good people become more powered, and I might actually get some love this time around, and keep it away from the baddies, except it didn't come on time. We were there early, we were setting up the perimeter, we were getting prepared, I was uh, just trying to set up some turrets and whatnot, and then kapow, pink lightning, out of nowhere, super powerful, bright flash, pain, uh, burning sensation, terribly disorienting, terribly painful, except when I woke up I wasn't dead, I wasn't covered in goo or crust, I didn't have any superpowers, I was actually just in a bathroom in a random train station and my, my body felt a little bit better than it had in a while and I was very disoriented. And, and, I, and I looked around and I, I realized that all my cybernetic enhancements were gone and that I didn't quite know where I was or what was happening and then it finally clicked. I actually got sent back to the 
bathroom and the train station across the street. So I'm like, man, that's weird. Let me step out. And I step out of the bathroom and the shop has a bunch of old outdated goods and people are looking at me like I'm a little bit crazy. Apparently I'd gone pale. And I look at the newspapers and I see that the date is wrong. It's about 10 years past. And I realize almost immediately that I had gone backwards in time about 10 years to the exact time and place that I went to go use the bathroom and buy snacks for my friends. And I'd been dealing with crazy stuff for the last couple of years here. Superpowers, electricity, teleportation, mind control, all that sort of nonsense. So time travel wasn't really that far-fetched, and it, I, I adapted to it quite well, all things considered. First response is, I've been given a second chance. I can, I can go back and I can finally get the superpowers that I felt were denied to me and that I can be a part of this the whole way through. I won't have to be a joke, I won't have to be a peasant, and I can maybe change things. So I put everything away and I sprint back to the church as fast as I possibly can, and just as I'm turning the corner from around to see it at a distance, wha-pow, the pink lightning strikes, and I'm too far away. And once again, I get absolutely nothing. No powers whatsoever. No love, no super strength, no electricity. And I just, it's heartbreaking, it's depressing to think for the second time in my life I missed an opportunity to be superhuman, to be something more than myself, something better. But at the same time I realize this time I'm not knocked out. This time maybe I can sprint inside the church before it seals up and see exactly what the hell happened to everybody in there. Because nobody had any memories of it, they had no idea what happened, they just kind of woke up with superpowers, right? So I sprint past all the people on the ground screaming for help this time and go to the, uh, to the entrance as it's sealing, but it's too late. I can't get in. I can't see what's happening to my friends. It's cocooning. It's sealing over. Everybody on the ground is sealing over, but I have no choice but to suck it up and to do take the moral high ground and do the exact same thing again. Help everybody on the ground as best I could. This time I knew a few things that were going to happen ahead of time and then help my friends out and secure everything and be the best and most useful person possible. Except I realized shortly after it calmed down and everybody was stabilized that I had effectively traveled back in time. I had the ability now to know who was going to go crazy, who was going to go bad, and who wasn't, and what powers worked and what didn't, and I managed to retain all of my knowledge and skills that I had acquired over the last several years, and I put them to very good use. I didn't do the same amount of research or politicking or Activision and lobby work. Instead, I went straight to combat deployment. My friends did not believe me. I even uh, maybe sort of accidentally removed a few people that I knew would go crazy later on. I was able to accurately identify when people were at their breaking points to predict how to beat the super baddies. And use this knowledge to the advantage and to the betterment of all. Of every single person. And the funny thing is, everybody assumed that I had superpowers, even though I didn't. They assumed that I had the ability to see the future, or assumed that I was made super brilliant, even though I failed every superpower test, and I assured them that I didn't. I continually lied about the time travel. I never mentioned it to anyone whatsoever. I thought I would play those cards a little bit close to my chest and keep it kind of safe. But unfortunately, things didn't pan out quite like I hoped they would. You would think that if you traveled in the future, you would be able to save more lives lives and, you know, maybe even be a better girlfriend to your Reaper girl. Get the mask off a little more often, you know. But it didn't quite pan out that way. Unfortunately, uh, some of my closest friends ended up passing. Uh, things got a little bit more unpredictable and uncontrollable later on. The girl that I was previously in love with actually turned evil, and I had to fight against her more than once. And things kind of spiraled out of control for me, even though they were better in general. I made the world a better place. There was one-tenth of the chaos there was. I was immediately respected for my ridiculous amounts of combat skills, considered one of the strongest humans on the planet, all this sort of stuff. But it was very unsatisfying. For 10 years I played this game, repeating the same events in parallel over and over and over, but changing the outcomes to be more positive, until the prediction came again from my uh, mentally enhanced friends that the pink lightning was coming again, and this time I knew that it was coming, and I just suspected that maybe I could go back in time and get superpowers and do this a third time and do it even better to save everybody and be awesome. So I ran back. And I was there early, I was ready, and lo and behold, right on time, wha-pow, pink lightning. However, instead of going back in time, or getting powers or anything, I was teleported to a simple white room, where two people, male and female, had a very short conversation with me, 
and they wanted to thank me for my service and my help. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I don't know who you are. And they said that they were in control of it, deities of some sort, that it was time for the human race to move on and evolve. But uh, they were unsatisfied with their first attempt, that it got more chaotic and more violent than before. But they'd kind of expected that, so they picked a person who was not there but properly motivated that day, me, to uh, assist along the way and to send back in time so that they could do it again but better and I would be working as their tool to clean it up and make everything more uh, in line with their goals to make a better future, happier and all that sort of stuff. And they left me with a nugget of knowledge that for 20 years, two decades going in parallel to each other, I thought that I was not special, that I was shafted, that I was not an integral member of the team, that I was not important, that my contributions were limited, and this motivated me to push further and further and further, and it was terrible for self-esteem and everything, but the reality was that I was the most key person to the entire thing, that I was kept separate from it on purpose, and that I was given these motivations on purpose because I was the key, the linchpin to the entire program, so that I could be sent back to fix things when it didn't go right the first or second or third times, but so successful as a matter of fact, so special that I did it right the first time around, and I didn't have to be sent back at all. And then I woke up. And guys, I hope you enjoyed the dream. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.